maybe more. But I believe that if you can focus obsessively enough on customer experience, selection, ease of use, low prices, more information to make uh, purchase decisions with, if you can give customers all that plus great customer service and with our uh, toys and electronics we have a 30 day uh, return policy. If you can do all of that then I think you have a good chance and that's what we're trying to do. You're not really a pure internet company uh, anymore either, are you? I mean, you've got millions of square feet now of real estate. You've got uh, a, a growing, huge and growing inventory of items we, that you we, keep in we stock. We do whatever. And you've got thousands and thousands of employees now. Yeah, we have over 3,000 employees and over 4 million square feet of distribution center space. And those are things I'm very, very proud of because with that distribution center space and half a dozen distribution centers around the country, it allows us to get product close to customers so that we can ship it to customers in a very timely way, which improves customer service levels. That's what we're about. If there's one thing Amazon.com is about, it's obsessive attention to the customer experience, end to end. And that's what those distribution centers are But you're not are a pure internet play. It doesn't, I, I, it doesn't matter to me whether we're a pure internet player. What matters to me is do we provide the best customer service. Internet, schminternet, it's, that's, that, you know, that, that doesn't matter. Well, but it does matter to your investors to know whether they're investing in a company that No, they is... should be investing in a company that obsesses over customer experience. In the long term, there is never any misalignment between customer interests and shareholder interests. Well, that's the same argument that uh, somebody at Walmart would make as well, wouldn't they? I, I don't see why not. I think they should make that argument. So uh, it's a correct argument. Okay. So, <laughs> so you'll open as many square feet of space, uh, physical space as you have to, hire as many employees as you have to to service customers. Absolutely, and we'll do it as rapidly as we can. That's a very uh, cost-intense proposition. Not compared to opening an equivalent network of retail stores. So if you open a bunch of chain stores, look, when we open a distribution center, we're opening places that may have, you know, where we may pay uh, 30 cents a square foot for, uh, for a lease instead of paying seven dollars a square foot, which you might pay in a high traffic retail area. So when you compare those things, they're not the same. You can't compare a big chain of, 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 uh, of retail stores to half a dozen distribution centers. It's just not, you know, it's bad math. Okay. Uh, either way, whichever side of the argument you believe, you're making what it seems to me to There's be... There's only one side, which is obsess over customers. But it seems to me that both with the speed of your growth in terms of the number of stores online that you're opening, the different businesses you're getting into, the number of distribution centers and uh, you're opening and new employees you're hiring, uh, that you are making an intense gamble here, which is uh, twofold. Uh, one, that you can run this number of businesses, different businesses, well. Uh, and, and two, uh, that you can make money by selling vast volumes of uh, products at essentially razor-thin profit margin. I think that the, f the first one in particular I agree with wholeheartedly, which is that uh, we're, uh, you, there's no guarantee that Amazon.com can be a successful company. What we're trying to do is very complicated. There's huge execution risk involved. We have a terribly complicated business. We're growing, you know, historically very rapidly. Uh, we're opening new product categories, we're expanding in new geographies, we have whole new business models with things like auctions. Now we think this is the less risky of the two approaches because scale is important in this business and, and it, it, you need scale also to offer the lowest prices and the best customer service to people. So scale is important to us and we're going to go after that kind of scale. But it does mean that the executional challenges are huge. And uh, so you'll find a bunch of people back in Seattle and around the world working very hard to make sure we service customers at the level that they're used to. And then even improving that. Isn't it, to some extent, a certain amount of, with all due respect, uh, uh, corporate arrogance to assume that you can come into these businesses which you have no experience in and uh, virtually overnight enter a huge variety of different businesses and become the best in those businesses and the market leader in those businesses and execute I don't, those well I don't when there are other companies that have been running these types of businesses for decades, if not more. I don't think so. So the the um, you know when we first started selling books four years ago, we were everybody said, look, you're 
just computer guys who don't know anything about selling books. And that was true, but we, but we really cared about customers, and now we know a lot about books. And when we first started selling music, people said the same thing. But we hired the right people, so we don't do this in a vacuum. We go out and hire the best industry experts in each of these categories. That's the same with toys and electronics. So, you know, we take this very seriously. We take the commitment to the customer very seriously. We're not about to uh, release something or announce something before it's 